Hello and welcome to YHTV's Trinity of Life. This is episode 25. I'm Christina Suzuma, your host of this program. I am delighted um, to continue to bring you my adventures as I have moments with uh, wonderful healers and inspirational individuals all around the world. And today we have with us a very special guest. Her name is Phyllis Suze. And I will let you decide how special this person is. I, I, I had resisted yoga. I used to say, poo poo, I don't need yoga. What do I need yoga for, you know? I used to be a dancer, I don't need yoga. So a friend of mine dragged me to the YMCA and uh, Tara Judell was teaching. She's a wonderful teacher, oh God. I took that class and of course that was it. I was hooked. I mean, absolutely hooked. And then she kind of, I followed her over here because she, I said, where else are you teaching? Here. So I followed her here. And, and I've been here ever since. I love it. It's, it's great. You know, it, what it's like, training your body is like tuning a piano because you have to listen. You really have to listen to your body. It's going to tell you everything you want to know. Everything. And I listen to my body. I really do. It tells you when it, how far to push, how far to let go, when to breathe. It's it's amazing. I mean, the the body is your first instrument. You know what I mean? It's it, and you have to play it with care and love. You gotta love it. Now, Phyllis, and respect it. When did you come to that awareness? I don't think I did really until I probably got into yoga. I'm pretty sure. Because, you know, I have limits. I can do so much in yoga, but there are certain things I may never be able to do. I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't even, I don't even, I don't ask for perfection because that's kind of a dead end. You know what I mean? Really, I, I want the journey to go on. Yes. You know, so if I just, I just continue to work, work hard. And I, I really need to come every day. I need to come every day. I usually come six days. I used to come only three, and then I moved to four, and then five, and now it's, you know, I just come all, as many as I can. So, so how did you hear about City Yoga? Um, I saw, I was searching for yoga studios online for when I came out here to see my best friend. And I just loved the, the, um, the video that I saw, and I, I just felt like this would be the place to go. And I was so right. Wow. Because <laughs> I love it That's so much. Wonderful. And, and in class, you made a mention, and, and everyone kind of stopped. Right. Well, I, I was wanting to say something, and I, because this moment happened where Phyllis had done the peacock pose, and it dawned on me at that very moment that this is the woman that I had been looking at for quite a few years and admiring her for doing yoga, her age, her vitality. I, I was just, I have to say something, and I, and I did, and I, I, it's thrilling. I, I had no idea that she would be here or, you know, anything like that, so it's very cool. That is so nice. Yeah. I, that's such a nice tribute to her, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, she's so inspiring. She's amazing. So... Thank you so much, Lisa. And I'm so glad you had a good class here on the West Coast. Yeah, thank you. I can't wait to come back. Great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. And uh, I find that when we meditate, you know, in yoga, I know that I, when I meditate, I always kind of say to myself, I'm here. I'm really here. That's kind of what I feel. And, and that's a joy. Mm. And that's glorious because I'm here, you know. I always, when somebody says, you know, they meet me or something, they say, how are you? I say, well, we're here, aren't we? <laughs> we're here. That's what's important. Well, you're living in the present. That's yeah, yeah, what's so much. beautiful. Pretty much, yeah. I think about that because um, I really think about, I think about what I don't think about, and that's the past. I really do not think about the past, except when you're asking me questions and I have to go to it. Right. Do you know what I mean? But otherwise, it. Um, I mean, the past, there were parts of my life that were so wonderful. 
I mean, when I was a dancer and working, I don't think anybody could have been happier than I was, you know. But now, I'm just as happy as I was then. I am. I'm doing everything I like, and I'm I'm capable of doing it. That's what's really good. I'm, you know, I or I I want to be capable, and I'm going to drive myself to be the best I can be. Mm-hmm. You know, in whatever I'm doing, because it was like a period of time when <clears throat> after I did the six tangos and did the CD. I kind of cooled it, and I didn't do. I really didn't. I just, I just didn't create. And I thought, what's the matter with me? You know, why am I not doing tangos? Why am I not making some wonderful music? Why am I even doing some songs again? Because I've done the songs. So it took. It's been six months, really, and just this week, it started to happen again. Mm. So sometimes you just have to let it. Not die, but you have to let it rest. Yes. You have to let it rest. And then it's going to bloom again. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's, it's just, if, you, if you're open, if you're open to it, mm-hmm. it can be just terrific. But Phyllis, I mean, in life, um, don't you feel that that's what happens in life? And everything we do, there's an ebb and a flow, and is that breath. Yeah, that breath that we have to take to let's sort of gather. Well, I think it should be like that. I don't think it is for most people, but it should be like that. I mean, um, because that little rest period is when you're churning inside and something is, something is happening. Do you know what I mean? And then you have to wait for the time when it's ready, you know, and I just wasn't ready to do songs until it happened, and because I always said to myself, after I did this 12 songs, I said, where did that come from? I have no idea where those songs came from. Where did the tangos come from? I have no idea, but it was inside of me, and it's probably been there all my life, Right. so I, I just wasn't ready, you know, and there's so many things that can make you ready. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I guess mainly to be receptive, to be open, uh, to be to accept, you know, what's happening, to to accept whatever that challenge is out there. You know, I think I guess you know people are so caught up with uh, things; they're yes. so caught up with things instead of. Maybe thoughts. I don't know. They're not. It's just too much. Uh, what is the word for things? I mean, you know, just we're caught up with uh, fashion. Do you know what I mean? Mm. We're caught up with materialistic things. Exactly. Thank mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Materialistic things, and uh, it's a killer. Mm-hmm. I think it uh, kills all creativity. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. So. So, Phyllis, we had this wonderful opportunity to watch you in your yoga class and watch you in this intermediate yoga class. Um, advanced. 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 <laughs> Oi, please. I don't know what an intermediate... I know what a basic class is, and I know what an advanced class is. I think that advanced mixed, that's what they call it. Mm-hmm. That's what Anthony calls it, advanced mixed. But uh, it's according to what, he, how he's feeling that day, <laughs> uh, and how the room's feeling. Yeah, and I, I noticed when it was really hot, it got, I mean, killer. Every class was a killer when it was really hot, and everybody was drenched, and the sweat was, even me, I don't hardly perspire. It was just coming off my nose. It was just so difficult. So, um, okay, so what about that? <laughs> <laughs> you asked a question. Yeah. Well, no, I, actually it was just leading, leading us into that event where we had the honor of doing that and, and um, watching you move from one pose so elegantly into the next. Um, That's a secret. It, it, That's it is. a secret. Yeah, because it's not, I, <clears throat> I say this all the time, it's not the pose. 
It's the space between each pose. Mm. It's the space. It's that moving from this space, from this pose into that pose. It's not doing this pose and then this pose. It's not that. And it's the same with music. It's not this note and this note. It's that space in between the mm-hmm, notes. Mm-hmm. It's the space between thoughts. It's a space between words. Yes. yes. It's that wonderful space. But it's like exactly what you said earlier, that space between yeah. what you are doing, your, your composing, your dance. Yeah. And it's, uh, I don't even think about it. I, I do think about it in yoga quite often about going from one pose to the other and not not doing a pose mm. you know really growing <clears throat> is what you're doing you're growing mm-hmm. so um it's a uh, it's a process that is uh very exciting mm. it really is and i never thought i would ever do yoga i mean it was not something on my agenda uh, in fact, I used to poo-poo yoga, you know, because I, I was a dancer, you know, what did I need yoga for? Mm-hmm. But I remember when I was dancing in New York, and there was a girl, and she was going to um, Pilates. And she came back from Pilates, a whole different dancer, mm. so much better, really better. And then I talked to Juliet Prowse. You know who Juliet yes. Prowse? She did yoga, and she said yoga changed her dance. It helped her so much. And I think that's absolutely true. It's just uh, an, an amazing process. Uh, and not, it's not an exercise. It's, um, what is it? It's not an, yoga is not an exercise. It's a place. Well, they, they, a lot of yoginis would say that it is a way of life. Exactly. Thank you. That's what it is. It's a way of life. It is. And I, if I don't do it every day, I miss it. Mm. I really miss it. I mean, because I didn't go this morning, but I did it before I went. You know, before mm. I, what I had to do, I definitely did like a half hour. Oh, I gotta have to do that. Yeah. You know. So you have a your personal practice basically in the means of at home if you can't make it to the studio. Yeah, I do that even if I go to class. I do that half hour. Oh, good. Yeah, because. It just makes me feel terrific. It just stimulates my body and gets Mm -hmm. the blood going and my breathing going. And, uh, you know, I can run down the stairs and have make breakfast and the dog and the whole thing. And I (laughs) feel good, you know. So I I just worry about the humans, the amount of human beings that ignore all forms of exercises, all forms of way of life. Mm-hmm. You know, they just, they have such a sedentary life, and it's, uh, I think it must be devastating to live that way. I don't know. It's a, uh, it's a killer, you know. So we have with us right now Anthony Beninati, the founder of City Yoga, which is, as you can very well see, a magnificent, beautifully grounded energetically. This space is really, really beautiful. If you ever have the chance to come here, I truly recommend it. Now, today we are here because of a very special individual in your class. Can you tell us a little bit about that journey? Because it is a journey. I mean, it's been a while now. Phyllis is just an incredible inspiration. Every time that she's in class, it's it warms my heart, it shocks the room, and I think it lifts everybody up to a whole new level. You know, I, I constantly hear people complaining in their class, this is too hard, or it's too much work, or I don't want to do it. And when Phyllis is in class, it's like, excuse me, she's 89. When she complains, you can complain. And she never complains, ever. Whatever I throw at her, she either wants to try or wants to master. She has true what I call studentship. It's this idea that ego out of the way, I want to extract out of myself the the most I can. I, I'm not comfortable just settling. It's it's I want to do more. And to have that verb, that zest for life at 89 years old is something that I can only aspire to. 
You know, it, it puts everything in perspective. It really does. She's, she's a miracle. Now, when she first came here, because I, I do believe that this is where she started and this is where she still is, did she start in a beginner's class at that time? I don't remember, to be truthful with you, but if I look back, I can probably guarantee you she didn't. I would imagine that Phyllis started right at the top. And uh, that's just her personality. Her personality is, I, I, I don't stop. I don't take the easy way. Don't be easy on me. At first, when I met her, you know, of course, I'm going to handle her very gently. But quickly, she reminded me, you know, I want to do this and, and let me do this. So she was telling me from the beginning, push me. So we have. We pushed her to where she is right now. And she's <laughs> phenomenal. She's, you'll see. I'm just, they will see with the poses that she does Absolutely. in her spirit. I mean, that, it is very magnificent, and, and uh, just seeing you work with her even in the class, I mean, it was very clear that you treated her no different from any other student that was in here, um, you know, with that strength and that power. And again, as I say, you, it's not forceful with you, it's, it's a breath. That's, that's how I would say it. It was almost like you would breathe it into them, and it was very beautiful, but there was such strength. And... Um, it, I could almost see how her body would resonate with that. She, you know, uh, as with any yoga student there, you have to get to know their levels of where you can push and where you can't. Um, I've learned a lot of things from working with Phyllis. I mean, she does have limitations, as we all do. Uh, I have to be very gentle with her skin because um, her skin is very thin, so I can't, you know, adjust her as strongly, for instance, as I adjust some other students. So there are some things that I have to look out for, but... As far as her physically being pushed and pushing herself, you're right. She, <laughs> she does it all on her own. It's, it's pretty spectacular. And, and I don't have to yell at her. I don't have to yell at anyone. It's just that encouraging, firm, you can do this. Or at least try it. Even if you don't do it, try it. That's really wonderful. And um, so working with her and comparing that to working with other students, um, do you feel that uh, it's really shifted your style of teaching or your methodologies in any way? Absolutely. I, 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 I find myself being a little harder on my other students because she embodies studentship so much mm -hmm. that if anybody in the room has, has a right not to do it, or to complain, it would be her. But since she doesn't, I look at my 20-year-olds in class, and I'm like, what? you have nothing to complain about. You know, Get on your mat and work hard. Because one day you're going to be 90, hopefully, and you're going to want to do all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the blessing of your practice, is if you can reach that age and still practice. You know, It's not for the young. It's not for the healthy. It's not for the beautiful. Phyllis embodies what I think yoga is about. It's about living your life to its end with full capacity, not limited capacity. Isn't that interesting? And um, do you feel that um, her essence from the beginning and the way it's developing, I mean, what... what what would you say, is it like she continues to blossom? Practice. She, does. she does. She continues to blossom. She's very hard on herself. You'll see. She's, she's demanding. It, it, and it's, it's, I think it's what has propelled her through her life. Mm -hmm. From one career to the next career to the next career. I mean, different phases of her life. But she demands a lot of herself. And I'm sure she demands a lot of me and she demands a lot of our other partners and that we have to be strong enough as teachers to guide a student that strong and that willful. Um, she's, you know, she's going to be 90. There's no real changing her. She is who she is, so we have to meet her at where she is and guide her from there. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a celebration on her 90th birthday. Better be here, huh? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, she better be here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to share with our audience, Anthony, about the yoga practice? Well, just that it is for everyone. I, I think the biggest myth is I'm too stiff or I'm not flexible enough to do yoga. There's a thousand reasons that we can go through. Um, or I'm too old is what I hear a lot of, even when, with people who are in their 
early 50s. Oh, yeah. My body won't change. This is the way my body is. You know, I, you know, I just, my hamstrings are just naturally tight, for instance. I mean, we hear this all the time. And, and the message of yoga is no. You know, you don't get to keep telling yourself these stories. You have to change the story. And when you change the story, you change your life. Mm-hmm. And yoga will help you do that. You just have to let it in. Now, what is the age of the eldest student you've had here that was just starting? Phyllis. She was 87. She was the oldest student just starting. She is, in fact, still our oldest student. We had a student who came for a week over in our Studio City location, and we thought she was older. And when I asked her her age, she was younger than Phyllis. She was actually in her... um, early 80s. So Phyllis is still the elder here at City Yoga. <laughs> the elder that we can still all learn from, right? Yeah, we have, we have pre and postnatal, so we have infants that are coming and crawlers and, you know, babies that are just beginning to discover their bodies, right, to 90 years old. It's, it's, that is the scope. It, it is present in these walls that yoga can be attempted and practiced at any age. Mm-hmm. And so you've been in the intermediate class with Phyllis for a number of years now. Yeah. Uh, share some little tidbits with us. Sure. Um, I mean, I remember the, one of the first times I practiced with Phyllis and um, having her close to me. And I just, um, obviously, she's so inspiring, right? She has an amazing practice. And obviously, she's physically really fit, um, regardless of her age, you know? And... But the thing that really um, kind of captured my intention about her and really um, captivated me was her energy and that light that she has from the inside out. And I feel like um, her practice just really brings that out, not just in herself, but she kind of spreads that through the class. And, um, you know, we often talk about the energy collectively that we all can build in a class. And... um, Phyllis, I think when she's, I, it's such a noticeable difference for me when she's there. I feel her presence. And um, I remember one class not long ago where a couple of women came that were pregnant or had, because the prenatal class was canceled. And so you had in one corner Phyllis, like practicing, 89 years old, rocking out, you know, Mayurasana. And then in the opposite corner, a little baby doing happy baby with her mom right above her doing down dog. And I just was like, this is what it's about, you know. And having a practice um, here at City Yoga and with, with Phyllis has actually inspired me to get my mom to come and I got her in. Yeah. So, I mean, she has a huge impact. I don't know if she realizes the kind of impact she has on everyone around, but, um, it's truly inspiring and what I think yoga is all about. So I I think Phyllis, this is a a really great place to segue. Um, when you speak about life, um, if you would like to share with our audience a little bit about your history (laughs) of like, like, you know, basically, you know, where you're from and what got you into dance and your career, basically, and what what led you all the way to this day, where where you have such a beautiful grounding about you, and and your outlook on life is just so inspiring for so many. Well, I think first of all, <clears throat> dancers are dedicated people. When when you start taking dance classes, you are, are you usually pretty dedicated. You go every day and you take that class every day. But you actually started dance well, I started, in your teens. Yeah, I started late. That's true. I had done uh, acrobatic and tap when I was a kid, when I was a child. But that kind of took a back seat, and I became a musician because my mother was a pianist, a wonderful one, and she taught me piano. And then I wanted to play various instruments, so I tried the violin, and then I, then I definitely thought I was going to be a flautist. But... Uh, that didn't happen because I started taking ballet lessons in the minute I took, and I was 14. And the minute I took that first ballet lesson, which was with George Balanchine. It's not a bad person to start with. No, no, you started with the best already. <laughs> and I have to tell you something about him. He wore sneakers. That's the way he taught. It was so funny. But anyhow, that was my first teacher. And then I had many others after that, but all great teachers in New York. New- 
New York was just, you know, the hub mm-hmm. of dance at that time. <clears throat> I think it still is. It still is, yes. still yeah. is. Uh, so, and I went, I added to that uh, form of dance, I added Spanish dancing because uh, a guy came, his name was Jose Fernandez, wonderful Spanish dancer, and he started to teach at the School of American Ballet. Mm-hmm. So I took mm-hmm. those lessons, and then I got really caught up in that, and I ended up... Uh, I guess I was about 17, and I did a USO tour as a Spanish dancer in a group, uh, kind of a concert group. So that was almost a whole year I did that, you know, going from air corps to air corps. And uh, when I came back from that, I did a concert doing Spanish dancing. And then I did my first audition for a uh, show, a Broadway show, was with Michael Kidd, and it was a show called Pretty Penny, and uh, we never make it. We didn't make it to New York, mm. but in that company was Ona White, Pete Gennaro. I can't tell you how many fabulous dancers. I don't know. I don't think they're now. They're not around. I don't think now. But uh, anyhow, that failed, and then um, I auditioned for Agnes Demille, mm. and that was Bloomer Girl, and that ran and ran. It was 1942. And I think for a couple of years, and then um, I, there was no show exactly. So I, or, let me see. I think I, I went as a replacement in Oklahoma, and I understudied J- uh, Joan McCrack, Joan McCracken, McCracken, McClacken. Can't remember her name. And uh, she was like the lead dancer and actress and singer in that show. Mm. And um, during that time, I a friend of mine said. <laughs> She was going to audition to go to South America and join the uh, Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo, which had not been to the United States for about 10 years, and they were going to do a big comeback. Mm-hmm. So, okay, I auditioned, and I got got the audition, and I went to Rio de Janeiro with oh, seven my. other dancers and uh, was there performing for two months in the summer. Mm-hmm. Cold cold there it's winter and their summer our summer is their winter mm-hmm. so we were there for a couple of months in San Paulo and then we came back to New York and we opened at the Met in New York and I knew I knew then I did not want to be in a company I just didn't want to be in a ballet company that was not for me so at that time Agnes was doing a new show and it was Brigadoon oh, so God. I auditioned again for her and of course I got it and um, that was a couple of years of work. Oh. It was such, I mean, all those shows were really great. So when that closed, I think I went into as a replacement uh, to High Button Shoes, and that was Jerry Robbins. And that's where I met Donnie Weissmuller, who became my dance partner. Mm. And we became a dance team, pretty successful. We were kind of played most of Eastern nightclubs and up in the Catskills and all of that. And then we were booked in Europe. And we went, uh, we opened Jouin Lapin at a, a fabulous Club Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> and on the bill with us was Lena Horn. Oh. And the floor was glass brick lit from underneath. Mm. It was gorgeous, not for dancing. Ah, ah, slippery. Oh, my God. And um, then we then we came home, and uh, I met Alan Sues, and I got married to Alan Sues, and then Alan and I formed an act together, and like a comedy act, like Elaine May and Mike Nichols, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cutting edge kind of humor, and we performed in a a nightclub in New York City called the Rue Bon Bleu, yeah. and we were there for a f- quite a few weeks with. Um, Professor Corey, Dorothy Loudon. Oh, it, was a, it was wonderful. And then we came out to California, and we went to San Francisco and performed at the uh, Purple Onion, which is right near the Hungry Eye. <clears throat> and then we came back to L.A., and we opened at a place called Cabaret Concert, which is a Hyperion and Sunset. Yeah. And on the bill with us was Phyllis Diller, just starting, oh and Billy Barnes Review. Billy Barnes had like four or five singers, mm. and he played the piano, and uh, I think he did all the arrangements and probably wrote the songs. He's still here. But 
Uh, <laughs> it's amazing how you're trying to keep track of everyone who might still be here. He's still here. So uh, that was good. And then there was like, it was hard to get work. It just was mm. hard. And uh, there was lots of television going on, musicals, Andy Williams and and uh, Dean Martin. All those shows had dancers. And I knew all the choreographers, so I was hired all the time. Oh, good. So, you know, at least we didn't starve. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, that lasted for, I last, that marriage lasted for about five years. Yeah. And then we started not, it was just difficult. You know, we didn't have any money. We were poor and we opened a little gazebo, which was a boutique on Santa Monica Boulevard or opposite Gelson's. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, and of course... It, we just couldn't make any money. Mm. So we got divorced, and then I married Norman Pincus. And for, fortunately, he was doing a, just starting a new show called uh, The Real McCoys. Mm. So that was with Walter Brennan and all of that. And uh, that was a very successful show. It ran for about seven years. Mm. So during that time, that was like, uh, I think I married Norman about 1960. Mm. And... Uh, I guess I was I was still working then. I was still dancing in in, in television, and then uh, I got caught up in I just fell into designing, and I opened a uh, an atelier, and uh, I had my own business, fashion for women, kind of high end sportswear, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, it was all about fabrication. It's what it was about, and soft and not constructed and that kind of thing. And So you completely stopped dancing and entertaining. Yeah, I really, and I, that was for about uh, 22 years. So then by the end of that time, it was, I guess I was burnt out. Well, <laughs> if dance is your passion and you're I'm not dancing for 22 years. So... Uh, my mother had uh, passed away, and she sent me her Steinway Grand. And uh, I started fooling around with that. That was when I started music and um, started taking lessons, mm -hmm. uh, classical lessons. And then I took some jazz lessons, and the woman that I, Joyce um, Collins, oh, she's not here either. <laughs> but anyhow, she was a great jazz pianist, singer too. So she freed me. She really gave me the wings to improvise. Mm -hmm. And that was when I, you know, that's when I started writing songs and and when I started dancing tango. And the minute I started dancing tango, I got caught up in that music. Mm -hmm. You were never boring, only adoring. Thinking, such an innocent flame, nothing to gain. I got the pain. You won't forget it. I'll always regret. There's no forgiving and no forgetting. We haven't time to hear the sad end. ladies were speaking about music and teaching and all that next to me. So I turned to the, this lady and I said, <laughs> you're talking about music and I'm looking for a jazz teacher. And she said, I'm a jazz teacher. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> so I think the following week I was at her studio and I was just fortunate that she happens to be a great, she was wonderful, really wonderful. And um, I... I worked on the jazz, but I never really got the chords that jazz pianists have to have. But I needed to be free, and she did free me, and I was able to improvise mm -hmm. and do my own harmony. So I just kind of worked out my, my I don't know how I did that. I just worked out my own music somehow. And, uh, and as the first thing I did was um, songs. Uh, and I, at that time, I was doing trapeze and oh. flying on a trapeze. 
And I thought about the gravity and how incredible it is that you're flying kind of on your own steam, you know. And uh, I, so I wrote this song, and it's called Free Fall. And uh, I asked a friend of mine who was uh, Scarlet Rouge, who was now an artist, painter, a wonderful painter. But at that time, she was singing. And she was about 24, <clears throat> and she had a young voice. It was just good, really good. Mm. So <clears throat> I called her, and I said, listen, I wrote this song. Come on and sing it for me. So and it, we worked on it, and we made a little CD, like Mickey Mouse kind of a CD. And it was Christmas, and we sent it to everybody for cards, oh. that, that CD. And then it was like a, a train that I couldn't stop because I just started writing writing lyrics and songs and lyrics and songs. And finally, I had about about 12 songs. And I asked Scarlett again if she would come and sing. So she sang those songs, and we did a concert here in my house. Mm. And we took all the furniture. We stripped the whole downstairs and put it in the garage. And we got, you know, chairs and everything. And we had about 125 people oh, came lovely. to that concert. And I had... Uh, I was already involved with tango because I had, because I guess I had done my first tango, which was um, tesoro, which means gift, and in Spanish. So uh, the guy, the bass player um, Pablo Muta, uh, was able to get the bandoneon player for me and. Uh, and the, uh, Marcelo Caceres, who was the guitarist, and we had timpani, we had percussion, and we had a violinist, Anna Cummings. All here. All here. So what we did was we, uh, we started with the, ta with the, I guess I had done about three tangos by then. So we did three tangos, and then they did some of their music, and then Scarlett and I did all the songs, the 12 songs. So it was quite an evening. I mean, who does that? <laughs> you know what I mean? In their own house? It was crazy. Anyhow, it was a fabulous evening. And then I didn't write. I really I just haven't written songs since then, and that was like uh, 2008, 2009, I think, when we did that. So I've been really working on uh, the dance. I've been working on tango. I had to. I gave up trapeze only because it was really rough on my hands and my feet. But how long were you doing that? I did it for a year, and I'd go every Saturday morning, and it was great. I have a lot of pictures to prove it. <laughs> you have to see that. <laughs> well, my son would come with me every Saturday, and he loves to photograph. So he would do all the photographs. So I've got a lot of photographs. One where um, I'm on the bar, but my legs are in a split. I don't know if you've ever seen that position. It's like you're upside down. Your arms are like this. You're upside down, and you're, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Wow. It's like when I did that, I said, I'm quitting. <laughs> so uh, I've been really uh, dedicated to tango dancing. I've been doing it for five years. I still think I'm lousy, but I'm going to keep going. And now I just started Latin. I did, I've never done Latin. So I've done, uh, I want to do the cha-cha-cha and the salsa and the merengue. And I'd like to have a portfolio of Latin dances and the tango. So that's, that's what I'm gearing for now. I cannot do it without yoga. I mean, that's what keeps me going is it keeps my strength up and everything. And Anthony gave us an exercise one time. Oh, God, I have to tell you about it. It's so great. You get up from a chair usually on both feet, right? You just, And you push yourself and you go forward and you get up. Mm. Try it with, on one leg. Put your hands on your hips oh. and your shoulders back and then just stand up. And not on, this is too low. Mm -hmm. You have to be not too low. I, I do it on something that's about 21 inches high. That's my tub, my bathtub. Oh, my. So I do that every morning. Every morning I do 24 on each leg. Oh. I started doing 10. Then I said, I got to do 20. And then Felix, my, my tango teacher, Felix Chavez, he said, 24 is the number you have to have, Felix, 24. I said, 
Oh, my God. I have to do 24. Yeah, you have to do 24. So next day, when I came in for my tango lesson, I said, okay, I did 24. He said, you did 24? I can't believe it. <laughs> oh, so anyhow, it's a great exercise. So I, do you do that every day? Every day. Every day before I come downstairs, I do that. Oh, that's, that's magnificent. That, you know, that and jump rope. See, jump rope is really... No, no. Why jump rope? Um, I the reason why I started jump rope is because Felix Chavez used to be a boxer, and oh. boxers do jump ropes, right? Yes. I uh, also was a great tennis player. But anyhow, I said, "You still have your t your jump rope?" He said, "Yeah." I said, "Bring it, and I want to try it. I'll probably fall on my face. Oh, do you yeah. think I can do that? I don't know." So he brought it in, and I took it home with me. I had to put a knot in it because it was like for him. Yeah. He's six feet, you know. So, so I started doing it, and all of a sudden I started doing jump rope. And I just love doing that. So we have a video of it, of doing jump rope. But there's many ways to do it. You can do uh, uh, one foot, other foot, one foot. Or you can do both feet at once. Both feet at once, it's hard because you really, you really have to jump. So good. So, so that's cardio. That's yeah. major cardio. Exactly, exactly. And I thought I need that. Mm. I need that. So, give me a um, an idea of your routine from like when you wake up all the way till when you go to sleep, if you if you don't mind sharing okay. that. Uh, okay, yoga first. Uh, in bed, mm -hmm. in bed, I do stretches. I can do splits in bed. I can do child pose. I can do cobra. And all supported on your back. Yeah. So I can do all of that. Uh, I can do back bends in bed. Then when I get out of there, I do a, 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 some of the asanas, like I do the one where you lean over and touch your feet, you know, the straight legs, that kind yes. of stuff. And then I go I do the one up to the sky, and then I do twists and turns, and then I do squats. I mm. do maybe 10 squats. And uh, and then I just stay in a squat for a minute. That's really great, you know. And um, and then I do that one leg thing, coming up off the chair. Okay, that's the way I. It takes me about half an hour to do all of that before I come downstairs. And then I, I have really a good. I love breakfast. That's mm. my best meal in the whole day. I love it. And, and what does your breakfast consist of? I, I have like a combination. I do like oatmeal and cream of wheat to, to, together. Mm -hmm. And then I put honey in it, like mesquite honey. I love mm -hmm. that. And then I put a cinnamon in it. And I put a little butter in it. And then sometimes a little half and half. I'm not afraid of doing that because I, I need weight. Oh, yes, we can see that. <laughs> so uh, I allow myself that. And then sometimes I'll have maybe even a piece of toast after that, sometimes. Then I do, then I go to yoga class. Mm -hmm. After yoga class, I come home and I usually have a protein drink, which is a weight gainer. I see. So, and I do that with like an almond milk. Nice. You know, which is great. So I do that almost every day. Um, and then I kind of wait a little bit, and I have very n not much lunch. I don't need a lot, of, like soup, mm -hmm. you know, or something like that. And then before I go for tango, which is like about four in the afternoon, I take a little, they say in Italian, pisolino. Mm. That's a small nap. <laughs> so I take a little pisolino, and then uh, maybe I'll have some um, applesauce with cinnamon or something like that, and yogurt before I go do tango. And then after tango, it's like 6 o'clock, come home and I have dinner. So mm. that's, that's kind of my day. And, and I, I, I cook almost every night for myself. Mm. I really like my own cooking. And I'd, I'm, I'm pretty imaginative how what I put together. And, and, then <clears throat> uh, and then I read or, you know, or I get at the piano. You know, whenever I have... A half hour or an hour, I'm at the piano, mm -hmm. you know. And sometimes if I'm a little early for yoga, uh, I'll get at the piano. Or if I'm early for whatever it is, right. it's the piano. So that's my life, you know. And then, you know, sometimes on a weekend I'll go to a good movie. That's about it. Or I'll go to a good show, 
you know, because there's some actually uh, theater is pretty good out here now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a lot better than it was when I first came, and there's lots of music, you know. Yes. So, so you know, you, there's lots of things to be occupied here. I find that um, Los Angeles is a very interesting city because it's not a city where you get a lot of outside help. Mm -hmm. It's you have to be a self-starter. Yes, you really do. It's not like New York. There's something about the vibration is so electric mm -hmm. that it just turns you on. You know, you just, there's a lot going on. Right, right. But out here, and it's, I, I remember when I was doing fashion and I, I had a friend of mine came out from New York to be my assistant. And she just hated it. She said it was so difficult to meet people. It's so mm -hmm. difficult to get, have a, a, a relationship with anybody. And she she went back. She said, I can't take it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I held out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sure, it. yes. I love it. I love this. It, I think it's an incredible city. I just love it that when I come up La Cienica and I see those mountains, mm. I said, where else? Do you know what I mean? New York, flat. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It's flat. And I come from Long Island, and oh, that's flat. Okay. You know, no mountains there. A lot of water. A lot of water. Yeah. That's, I mean, you really set your life here and you sort of have everything, everything yeah. for you right here. Everything is, is just perfect for me, you know. I can, I could walk, I don't even have to use my car. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've been thinking lately of getting a bicycle. I really would love to ride, a, I, lo I, I love bicycles. That's wonderful. But I can't, and I see, you know, when I walk my dog in these canyons, there's two guys that ride up those canyons mm. on a bicycle. And I say, when they come by me, I say, how do you do that? I mean, that's got to be a killer, huh? To ride up a canyon. Yes. Up a canyon. But you're walking it. Yeah, a lot different. Yeah. <laughs> but I would like to have a bicycle. Every time I see somebody riding a bicycle, I get so jealous. I just look so delicious. Yes, just stay on the canyon yeah, roads, though. Not, 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 not on the main roads. Yeah. It, the issue is the cars don't respect cyclists these days. Yeah, huh? that's the dangerous part. You think so? Oh yes, I love bikes, but it's, it's just people aren't aware. They're not aware of what's around them because they're moving so fast. It's very similar about what we were talking about the industry and the film industry and how people just like to just. Go. So and when you cross the street, do you always feel like you really have to be careful? Oh, very much so. I never feel that. Oh, very much so. I always feel they're going to if, stop. Oh. I do. Oh, that's they're good. They're going to hit me. How dare they? <laughs> I know. I know. I, I, I think I've run into too many people where, where they've run into accidents or cars yeah. have run into them with the walk light. Oh, yeah? Oh, yes. Yes, uh, with the walk light. Like the light will turn, but then the car that's making a right hand turn, it just goes because it's yeah. like, oh, those cars have stopped. I can go now and not even be aware of someone stepping I think you're safer off. in the middle, in the middle of, not at the walking place. In the middle, I think you're safe. Right in the center meridian? Yeah, because they really have to stop for you then. They, they're not yes. cut off, you know what I mean? Yes. But at the light, they know it's, it's their turn. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And no, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think you have some really wonderful angels around you protecting you all this time as you cross streets. Um, so, Phyllis, um, you also mentioned that, that you play tennis quite yeah. regularly. Yeah. I, I haven't played lately only because it's just been too much. Uh, there's been a lot going on, mm -hmm. you know, with the media and, all, and magazines and stuff we've mm -hmm. been doing a lot of videos and and with tango and uh and yoga in the same day it's i have to figure out it's like every time i want to play tennis something happens the day before that i can't play the next that the, day you know day. and i'm uh, i've become a sub i used to play oh. regularly i used to play before i did tango i really played like maybe three or four times a week mm -hmm. so with a uh, group of ladies so always doubles so, uh, and those ladies are like between 40 and 70. Mm. So big range of size, you know, but they're all, they're all good players. They all play terrific. 
So I just haven't played it. And I love the game. I love it. I love playing it and I love watching it. I think it's the best game. But I have to cool it for a while. Well, because you do your um, yoga every day mm -hmm. and you do your tango every day as well? Yeah, five days a week I do tango. Yeah. Uh, that's quite intense. Yeah, it is. It is. There are many days when I think, Felix, call me and tell me you're going to cancel. <laughs> 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 and and do you both perform? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm waiting for him. He just took a trip. <clears throat> I'm waiting for him to come back, and we'll probably we'll perform again. Because we performed in many different places. Here in Westwood, in Burbank, and uh, where else? I don't know. In Downey. We put, all those places where there are malongas. Mm. You know what a malonga is? No, please. A malonga is where people go to do Latin dancing, pretty much. Mm. They do tango and salsa and all of that. I think maybe some places they do ballroom. I see. But it starts at about 8 and it goes on till midnight. And they dance all that time. And what's fascinating is the age difference. I mean, it can be like 18-year-olds and then 70-year-olds, you know, and they're all all doing it and loving it. Mm -hmm. It's great. Oh, yes. it's, I think dance has become, It's now it's very hot. Yes. You know, it's really hot. And Latin dancing especially, mm -hmm. you know. So I guess with, all, you know, there's a lot of television shows now, you know. With, so You Think You Can oh, Dance yes. and Dancing with the Stars. Yes. Actually, So You Think You Can Dance is a good show. Oh, is it a good show? Oh. It's, um, it, it's not Dancing with the Stars at all. It's really good dancers. Mm. I mean, really superb dancers that have to audition. Maybe, I think they audition maybe a thousand people mm. and end up with two dancers, a boy and a girl, that are the best dancers in the United States. I think we need to get you on that show. You, uh, I think we need to get you oh, on that show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, though, but these dancers, the dancers today that dance in these competitions, are not just ballet dancers. They're yeah. dancers that have had uh, gymnastics. They've had yes. uh, probably karate. They probably had martial arts. They've had everything. And they can do the most phenomenal things I've ever seen. When I was a dancer, that, that wasn't so. It was I, not so. I think in, in when, when you were dancing and learning, everything was so precise like the ballet yeah. and the modern. I mean, it separated. was precise and separated. very separated. Yeah, exactly. It was distinct. Exactly. Now it's almost like everything's integrated itself. That's right. That's right. So it's pretty interesting to watch these dances. And also there's hip-hop they do in that dance, you know. Incredible hip-hop. I don't know. And you're not going to take up hip-hop? <laughs> I can't spin on my head. That's where I love to see them spin on their head. I, it's amazing, I, isn't it? I don't know. How do they do that? Yeah. And they do it without any training. You know, they're kids. They just learn it themselves. It's amazing. That's pretty good, huh? Yeah. That's a challenge. And did that, didn't that start in New York? I don't know. I honestly don't know. But I know that it just blows my mind when I see that. Right. right. I mean, it's like also gymnastics. That's ah, the other yes. thing. Yes. Oh, well, which, okay. It's the only thing I regret. I didn't do gymnastics when I was a kid. I would have liked to have done that. But people didn't do it then. Oh, my. But you did trapeze. That's quite close. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. So, so, Phyllis, okay, so if you had, what, what is the next few things that you would like to experience that you know that comes to the top of your mind? Hmm. I guess... I would like to do some music like Stephen Sondheim. That's what I would like to do. Oh, God. <laughs> I would like to do his harmonies. I'd mm. like to figure out his harmonies. They're different from anybody else's harmonies. And when I hear his music, it usually makes me cry, and I don't know why. Mm. It just touches me, really touches me. I think that I would like to do that. And um, I wish I could go back. Uh, you know, I even applied at Cirque du Soleil has a school here in Hollywood. Oh. Yeah. And it's not just for people that do gymnastics. Families go there with their kids and they learn. And it's, but it's not flying. It's more stationary. 
So in other words, it's a bar, but you do all kinds of stuff on the bar, or rings, or maybe yes. the ropes, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, I, I actually applied for that. I wanted to do that. And then I took a fall actually doing tango, and I really hurt my elbow and my arm. And I didn't go, and so, and I haven't been, I haven't gotten myself back to that, but I would still like to do that. Well, there's still time. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep up the yoga. Yeah, I will. So, Phyllis, um, as we kind of come to a close here, what, uh, do you have any suggestions for people out there on, on how to live such a full life as you have? I, I think the most important thing I can say is, and this is difficult, is to really love what you do. Mm. You really have to like what you do. And that's really hard because a lot of people are working in situations that are really unpleasant and it's difficult for them to enjoy. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, I've always done what I really loved. Mm. Uh, I've, I've never been forced to do anything. I'm, to, I'm fortunate. Mm -hmm. I'm really fortunate. But if you can steer yourself somehow in a direction, you know, that is, um, that you like or like that you think you might like. I also think that if you're open and accept a challenge and then maybe take action, that can be pretty good, you know. But you, to, to be open and take and accept the challenge is not enough. Mm -hmm. You have to take action. So I think that's it. And you have to, I guess, basically, uh, if you don't like yourself, you have a huge problem. You better like yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you better really, you better, and I'll tell you one thing I didn't say. I think when I was really started dancing without even knowing it, I think I formed a partnership with my body. And I think that has stayed with me, really. I really, um, I take care of my body. I really take care of it because I want the quality. So you have to really take care. And hardly anybody does. Hardly anybody does. It's a shame. Yeah, it's I always really tell people we take care of our cars more than we take care, better than we take care of our bodies. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So... I think that's really, that probably maybe that's the most important thing, you know, is to really give your body a chance. It wants, it wants you to. Mm -hmm. it's, it's yelling at you. Do give me a chance. Let me move me. Mm -hmm. You know, you got all these joints. They need to be oiled. Yes. <laughs> and part of the oiling is the movement. Exactly. So... That's it. I can't say anything else about what to say for people. I just think that's it. Body. You have to think about your body. Your mind, too, of course. And that needs uh, exercise. And in fact, that's why I started to learn languages, because mm -hmm. I thought, you know, that's a tremendous exercise, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. So... Well, that's music in its own. Yeah, it is. It is. It's beautiful. But I only like Latin languages. <laughs> the romance languages. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Lovely. Thank you so much, Thank Phyllis, you, for your time. It's and been lovely meeting you mm -hmm. and working with you. And uh, I know that this is going to be great. I do, too. <laughs> Thank you, Phyllis, really. It's for, really for sharing and, and being so open about your personal life and, and inspiring all of us. I hope so. I, um, I don't know. People say that to me quite a bit. Say, but it doesn't really do much good if they don't act upon it. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yes. <laughs> so inspiration is good, but you had to go further. But it's like planting the seed. Oh, we okay. plant the seed and... And in some time, goes. at some time in their life, something might just that's click. Right. Well, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Because that's actually that's what happened. I don't know what, whether I planted the seed, but as far as music was concerned, I guess because uh, I had so music, so much music at home, mm -hmm. 
you know, my, um, my bedroom was over, over my mother's studio. Oh, my God. So, you know, when she was practicing at night and doing Chopin and Brahms and Beethoven, it was nice to go to sleep to. Oh, yeah. So I was lucky to have that. Not everybody has that. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. And thank you, everyone, for joining us here on YHTV's Trinity of Life. I am here with the beautiful Phyllis Suze um, that has honored us here today. And um, I hope you truly have enjoyed this journey that we've taken with her. And we look forward to seeing you again next week on our show. And also, if you could join us on Magical Medical Tour on Tuesdays at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1.30 Eastern Time, with our wonderful co-host, Dr. Glenn Woolman. We look forward to seeing you again on shows. Namaste. So when you first approached your yoga practice, um, after I'm assuming many years, as you say, that you, you just stayed away from it, what was it about yoga at that moment or that time that resonated with you? What was it? Uh, I'll tell you what. I remember, I remember Tara Judell, and we were doing that first class, and she said, now we're going to do handstands. I said, oh, God, I'll never do a handstand. I didn't do the handstand. But I think in that same class, at the end, we did the back bend, the push-up back mm. bend. I could not get near that. I could not get near that. But I wanted it. I wanted it, and I stayed with her, and I think it was about a week later, I pushed up into a back bend, and I remember Tara saying, hey, Phyllis, you're up there. <laughs> oh, God. I, you know, it's just like, um, I like that step forward. I like that inch. I like, I like that push. Yes. I like that feeling, oh, I can just, if I just a little bit further, a little bit further, like today, today was not an easy class. Not an easy class. And by the time I got to that pickup, peacock pose, I was a little tired, you know what I mean? And I frantic that, you know, that I wouldn't really do it right. But I made myself do it right. Do you know what I mean? You just, it's like sometimes I finish the class and I'm really exhausted, really, really tired. And I sit for a minute and then I think, you know what, I gave everything I had. I gave everything I had, and then I went one inch further, one inch further. After you give everything you have, you have to go one inch further. It's always that. Yes. I think it's in life, it's whatever you do. Mm -hmm. It's not just yoga. I, wherever you are, I mean, if you're a painter or if you're a writer, it's always that urge to go, to go, to go. Yeah.